Hey everyone, this is Ryan with the PC Battle Stations, and today I'm going to show you how I built my custom desk. So I created a custom desk just because I know that I needed something custom, nothing that I saw online or, you know, in person didn't have the dimensions that I wanted. And I needed an L-shaped desk just because uh, on one side I needed something for my gaming setup, my personal computer, and then on the other side I needed something for work. I also wanted something unique, something that no one else had. So for the top of the desk, I kind of wanted a wood countertop just because it's able to support heavier weight. Also able to drill holes if I needed to uh, run some cables for cable management. And also I'm able to kind of sand it down, strip it down, and paint it uh, for my white and black theme. The countertop that I went with is an Ikea Hamarp. Theirs was cheaper than Home Depot and they actually had theirs in stock, so that was a no-brainer. Some of the tools that I used to get this done is some wood glue, wood screws, the vice grip locking seat clamp, and uh, for the pocket holes I used a Craig jig, wood filler, drill, circular saw, straight edge clamp, saw guide to get the nice clean lines for the circular saw, and some safety glasses. And after cutting these countertops to size so we can make an L shape, I needed to combine them. So that's a little tricky. There's multiple ways of doing this. I decided to go with a pocket hole solution to join these two pieces together. I used a jig to drill accurate holes so I can get those uh, pocket hole screws in there, which are a lot stronger for a tight join between those two pieces of wood. And it's actually surprisingly tough once you get those two things combined using pocket hole joinery. And actually built two of these desks just so me and my wife would have matching ones. I know, how cute, right? And here's Jax looking over everything, making sure I'm doing everything right. After I got everything joined together, now it's time to sand everything down. Wanted to smooth everything out, especially where the two pieces came together. Want to make sure it's nice and flush. Also, I wanted to kind of take off any kind of top layer on that countertop just in case if there's any kind of finish on it. So it would be able to, I'd be able to paint it and would be able to kind of soak in. After everything's nice and sanded down, everything's nice and smooth, go ahead and uh, use some wood filler to kind of fill those cracks, make it nice and smooth. Using this type of wood filler, you gotta mix a couple ingredients together, forming a paste. Go ahead and put it on, and then you let it dry out so you can sand it down so it's nice and smooth. Looks like the desktop is done, so it's time to apply the paint. I used a white glossy paint and I think I applied about two or three coats. Next up is building the square leg. And like I said, I wanted something different rather than just standard legs that go up and down. The leg is just made up of two by fours that I joined together. So I cut the two by fours to size and then I go ahead and use the pocket hole technique again to combine those two by fours together since I kind of fell in love with that little jig and the way that it kind of uh, really joined the wood piece together. It was really nice and tough, nice and tight. And I thought of putting this white plastic sheet kind of in the middle, so in the future if I wanted to put some lights behind it, they'd be kind of shining through, which I thought would look kind of cool. And after everything is cut, I had to cut a groove in the middle of all the 2x4s, so the white plastic sheet would just slide right in. Combine the three sides together, and then I cut the plastic sheet to size, and uh, sounds easy, right? Uh, no, everything didn't kind of line up really well, kind of struggled a little bit. Um, which kind of sucked, but in the end I made it work without looking like a complete dumpster fire. Little did I know that I would have more fun with the vinyl wrapping around the 2x4s. Man, unrolling and then cutting them to size was fun, but even more was applying it. Then you heat it up with a heat gun so it would kind of form to the 2x4s. Ugh, to this day I still wake up having nightmares of this. I wanted something unique and custom for the leg supporting the middle of the joint desktop. Not just a cookie cutter straight up and down leg. I need to be able to support that heavy weight that will get thrown on top of the desktop and also to hide some cables for some clean cable management. To draw the elliptical curve, I marked my endpoints of the top and the bottom and now you just need to connect the two with some sort of curve. So I found my central location for the stationary point where I dropped my twine and extended it out and tied a pencil on the end then connect the two lines keeping the twine stationary. And to cut the curves I used a jigsaw. Then I painted them black with a black glossy paint. 
Now moving on to the cabinet, I wanted to build some sort of storage system, with a single shelf in it. It's not so complicated as a drawer system and I can still store stuff in there. I'm basically just building a box and throwing a shelf in the middle with a door on the front. The cabinet's just basically built out of three quarter inch plywood and then I just cut them to size with all the dimensions that I had uh, measured out before using a circular saw. And a tip for some rookies out there, if you want to drill holes in something and don't want to accidentally drill all the way through not knowing the depth of how far you're drilling down, measure the depth and put some painter's tape, wrap that around the drill bit to tell when to stop at that certain depth without drilling all the way through the board. Works real slick. I made sure I remember drilling holes for the shelf pins to hold the shelf before I put everything together. It just makes life easier. When putting these cabinets together, I first tried using pocket holes, but they ended up not really working well and didn't really line up directly in the middle of the board. So I ended up just gluing it and then screwing it the old fashioned way. After putting everything together, I painted them the same black glossy paint as that middle leg. Moving on to installing the door on the cabinet. I've refinished my kitchen cabinets when remodeling our kitchen, so installing the hardware isn't that hard. It's just that you need the tools to do it. I use a Forstner drill bit to shred the hole. I found that using painter's tape will not splinter the wood when drilling. So this gives a clean hole with no splintered wood around the hole there. After that's done, mark the location of the screws to mount the hinge and install. Now to make the risers that will separate the legs from the top to give it a separation. I don't know what it is, but it just looks cooler than just going straight up to the bottom of the desktop. It gives it some separation. Then we sand and sand some more. Sand and sand, sand, sand. We painted a gray color as a complement to the white and black theme and goes with my white, black, gray, and blue logo. Finally, after all the pieces are done, we put them all together and time to assemble the actual desk and hope that everything you measured and planned for, hopefully it all works out. I had a height difference of the square leg from the carpet and the wood floor, so just put a couple cloth pads where the leg will touch the wood floor to kind of support it. After we got all the legs lined up, everything's kind of ready for that desktop to get dropped down. Man, that thing was heavy, but good thing I'm um, pure muscle. Once everything's lined up, desktop looks good, everything's kind of what I had planned for. Go ahead and secure that desktop on top of the legs using these little L-shaped metal brackets. Stay tuned for the next video, which is gonna be my favorite. It's gonna be the PC build, and we'll go. <laughs> yeah! And we'll see you guys in the next episode.